I do have to point out that a writer who has feels the obligation or the flow through or the voices from all of that Canada who wants to write those stories is shut down by the main commercial storytelling apparatus. Well, they don't want to tell those stories. So you have a large part of your culture called commercial television yeah. that does not want to hear from any of those Canadians. Definitely I'm not. sorry. They don't want to hear about that stuff at so, all. So it is a subject about writers. Yeah. And the writers is in that situation where the main commercial producing networks which is the large part of our, the main part of the popular culture of telling stories that we are, yeah. says we're not interested in that two-thirds of people. I'm sorry. What does that do to us as artists, as an actor, as a writer? Everything. It does everything bad. I mean, we tried, we, uh, they brought a guy into CBC recently uh, from somewhere, Trevor Walt, I don't know if you ever come across mm -hmm. him. They brought him back from somebody, and uh, so we went in to talk about a story that we heard about, um, and he was keen, because he'd only been there 20 minutes when we went in, you know, and he's positive he's going to bring something, he's the head of the English drama, and uh, this is a story about uh, Rocco Perry, I don't know if you know who he is, he was a Hamilton gangster, who was actually uh, as good a, a bootlegger and rum runner as Al Capone, he was the Canadian king of <laughs> rum runners, and he, that's that story, and he was big and successful, and he basically had the, the uh, <clears throat> Prohibition market all stolen up and he was doing a lot, signing up to Chicago. But the big story, the thing that appealed to us was that he fell in love with this or Orthodox Jewish woman. And, uh, and, and she ran away from her uh, Orthodox Jewish husband and these two kids and they had this great love story. And she lived with them. They were like kind of Bonnie and Clyde of Canada. And uh, she This is a true story? Tor absolutely true. Wow. Rocco Perry was his name and uh, she became his um, consigliere. You know, she became his, uh, his businesswoman. She took all care of all that stuff. And she was killed in a, and she was gunned down leaving her house. So it's a, it's a great story, you know, and and it's a love story inside this gangster thing, which is all ours, you know. He could see, and he knew Capone, he knew all those guys, and he was our guy. And he started off nothing, like another thing. It's a godfather, she, immigrant, uh, struggling. He, she was working in a bakery with her husband. It's a just great story. So we're in there, and I'm telling this guy this story, right? And he's the developing guy, right? And as I'm telling the story, he's getting really, really excited. I'm thinking, you poor bastard. <laughs> you have to go up and pitch this to those people, and you're going to be really excited about it, and they are going to shoot Kill you down, you. just destroy you, and that would be the end of you. Well, it was the beginning of the end, actually. Of that guy? Yeah, he didn't last long, because he would do Which stuff like this. this? Oh, see, you see, it was our network. And they, they have no, and he kept saying, but it's Canadian, it's about as Canadian as you can get. It's German. And in those buildings, having worked in Hamilton, those, a lot of those houses are still there. A lot of that stuff, those neighborhoods, you can have just done it, you know? They wouldn't have, you just need the vehicles. Yeah, so I thought, but at the meeting I even thought this, you will not, they will see who you really are now, <laughs> you will not be invited. And the story I heard about him was that, and I don't know if this is true, but it probably was true that, he found out he was fired because when he went to the CBC one day, his card didn't fit in the, you know, his entry card didn't fit, didn't work. And he went, oh, this has got to be a mistake. And he went to, uh, I love this story, whether it's true or not. <laughs> he went to the guy, you know, the guy in the booth and said, my, my card doesn't work. And the guy said, looks him up and said, well, you're not even supposed to be in the building. <laughs> so, so, goodbye. Wow. Uh, so anyway, yeah, so that's that story. And then, of course, uh, and we wanted to do the story about... Um, the Hudson's Bay Company. I'm mean, here, the CBC is developing that. But here's the problem with it. We went to them with it, right? We had a whole take on it because we were wanted to do We think in some way that Fort, uh, I can't remember the name of that fort that was in Winnipeg. Um, Gary? Yeah. And there, there it was. Metis, French, English. That's where the country started, started to have to get together and be, get along together in that one fort. You know, guys are coming from Montreal, and they're coming from north, and the trappers, and they were all fighting in the northwest country, and Astor was coming up from the States trying to take it over, and we thought, well, there it is. So we went in there, and they said, we've already got that in development. So all I could think of to say was, it's a really big Canadian story. If I was you, I'd put a few of them into development, you know, <laughs> to take the best one. I wouldn't take, you know what I mean? So we got that over. I said, I actually said, suppose they fuck it up, you know? Wouldn't you want to have three groups of people doing it? It's a big, it is the story. The one's never been done. The fur trade. The way this country was formed. That's the big one. Don't, and I remember saying, don't, okay, I, I said, please don't fuck it up. <laughs> you know, it's, you fucked up the app, you fucked up everything else. Don't fuck this up. 
It's uh, so, I mean, literally, wouldn't you? You're running a CBC and it's like, okay, someone wants to do something about the, about the fur trade, the Hudson Bay Company. I'm going to get three teams, minimum, to, just minimum, to write three different scripts and give a proposal about where it's going. Just to see. Not, okay, they got here first. They got here first, so they get to do it. And uh, I, so right away on that level, I said, it doesn't even have to be us. Just turn to two other groups, give them a shot at, at it, so you got the best chance. No, oh, what are you talking about? <laughs> we can only do one at a time. But why? I said, why? You know, it's a big thing. You should be taking this seriously. Oh, well. That's why I had to get out. <laughs> you know, one of those things, you know, again, like I'm just talking sense here. So when you leave your post as a writer and start to talk about, if I was the network, that's when they really get to go, oh, they're megalomaniac. No, I, said, I would just do it like that. Think about it at least. Yeah. You know, how many, how many more things? Can, and really, now I'm thinking, God, get it right, you know? Do you think these discussions you had with those kind of producers made any it, impact? <laughs> Sorry, would it have been the same in 1975 as it would in. No, I got no. I, I think when people like um, Owen Hirsch was there, and and it was Alan um, fellow just died. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 